Hi, um, my name is Venki Sundaram. Um, I have been in uh, semiconductor packaging since 1997, so it's about 25 years now. Uh, done a couple of startups um, successfully, and then I uh, built an industry consortium at Georgia Tech, uh, developed glass interposers uh, for 2.5D and 3D packaging. And in my last role, I was uh, at an Indian uh, multinational uh, building new business uh, areas for them. And uh, in 2022, I'm actually uh, a, a consultant and I'm helping a few uh, big companies uh, with their uh, innovation and uh, commercialization needs. Mr. Shundaram, thank you for being here today. We're approaching the end of the workshop. What parts did you enjoy the most? I would say there was a lot of energy um, and uh, quite a diverse group of people. Uh, not only from backgrounds, but also from very various parts of the world. I was surprised how far people had traveled to uh, come for this workshop. Um, and I could see a lot of collaborative energy, um, open innovation as the title said, uh, even though a lot of companies uh, don't like talking about forward-looking uh, technologies and products. Uh, I was uh, really happy to see a lot of uh, dialogue and a lot of collaborative uh, discussion. You've been in the industry for more than 20 years. How do you think silicon photonics will transform the future of technology? Yeah, it's a very interesting question, right? Um, so I have actually been uh, working on photonic integration uh, from a packaging person's perspective uh, for almost the whole 25 years I've been in this field. And, uh, you know, um, photonics has always had a place. Uh, and uh, the place was always kind of, um, you know, driven by how much copper interconnects could do and couldn't do. And uh, copper interconnects kept innovating, and so photonics kept getting pushed um, out. Uh, but I feel like there is now kind of a coexistence uh, of the photonic and the electronic worlds. So uh, I, I would clearly say, you know, uh, there is a consensus that looking ahead in the next 10, 20 years uh, to continue to scale data, uh, big data the way we've been doing, uh, requires photonics uh, to scale as well as the electronics. And photonics uh, does always have a perception of uh, being cost challenged. Um, and uh, maybe it's not as uh, real as the perception is today, but it does need to continue to, uh, to scale the economics. Uh, as much as the technology and the, and the performance. What are some of the biggest challenges in the area of silicon photonics right now, according to you? I, I think there's always a, a first answer from uh, every user's perspective, and that is actually like a dollar per terabit. We used to say dollar per gigabit before. Um, I remember working with uh, two or three major system companies about 10 years ago when, I, when our team developed the uh, glass photonic uh, module uh, demos, and they used to say, it's the cost, that is the bottleneck. That, that's the last bottleneck that's going to unlock, you know, the use and the relevance of photonics in these systems. And uh, I think nothing has changed in my mind from that perspective. Uh, so the cost uh, reduction, there's been tremendous innovation, I would say, in photonics. And silicon photonics itself is an enabler to you know major cost reduction because of being compatible with 300 millimeter silicon foundries and uh, and CMOS platforms. So that compatibility has dramatically changed the cost perspective and the cost capability of silicon photonics. But uh, at a system level, the cost has to be optimized. So it's not just the silicon photonic, it's a cost that needs to be added to the rest of the cost of the system to come up with the overall product cost, right? So it, it, the silicon photonics has to continue to scale down in cost, just like the electronics has. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be adopted as rapidly as people would like to see it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the cost aspect. But I, I, I would say the other aspects that are now starting to show up in the chiplet world without even looking at photonics are, uh, you know, really about power delivery, clean power delivery at the, you know, the highest efficiency and also, you know, whatever inefficiency is there in the power delivery, how do you remove that heat from that system? And once you bring in the photonics, this uh, power and thermal problem is going to even multiply in magnitude. Your talk was about advanced packaging. Could you elaborate a bit more about how you see the future of packaging in silicon photonics? Yeah, so I think you can see, right, the whole 
theme of the workshop is co-packaged optics. Uh, so I showed a chart of you know how the optics were uh, you know at the rack. Then the optics came, uh, the fiber came to the board, and then now the fiber has come into the package. And people are talking about fiber going to the chip directly. Um, so um, th the system at the at the system level um, requires optimization of the optical interconnect and the electrical interconnect at the same time and the power delivery and the power efficiency and the heat. So um, the um, photonics is approaching the chips, the electronic chips closer and closer in every generation. So I think that's no different than what we always do in packaging, which is shorten the interconnect length to be most power efficient and also space and cost efficient. So uh, now photonics has an opportunity to continue to do that um, by bringing that photonic interconnect in real close proximity to the to the electronic interconnect. Um, and the other thing that has happened in the last uh, decade at least is in the electronics world, uh, it's really gone from system on chip to system on package. Uh, rather than integrating on monolithic silicon, it, it is now a world of chiplets where you have to have different functions on different pieces of silicon or, or non-silicon devices and you use the package to integrate the system. So now I think uh, it's a seamless transition to say, I add photonic chiplets. Uh, some people call it optical IO, different terminology, but bringing those in together into this kind of package integration, um, it, it's really a continuation of what we've been doing. You talked about the ecosystem today as well, that consists of a wide variety of companies. How do you think a large company like Applied Materials can contribute to the innovation needed in the area of silicon photonics. Yeah, so I, I would say there are the usual, uh, you know, uh, um, pathways, right? That you have done with, uh, you know, transistor making and all the other uh, display and all the other platforms you've enabled, which is developing the manufacturing tools at scale that you need, like uh, you know what Dr. Ohm mentioned in the beginning, right? Uh, but that to me is only one piece of what Applied can do. Uh, the other piece I always look at companies like Applied uh, with their, with your history, rich history in the, you know, CMOS fab, right? Which is actually one of the most standardized industries in the whole world of, of any industry, not just electronics. And, you know, the node scaling that happened where, you know, there will be many, many different suppliers and uh, foundries or fabs, but they all march to the same exact standard every generation. Uh, I've always wanted to have this node scaling concept in packaging as well. And, uh, you know, we try to promote that, but companies like Applied can actually influence that because you can develop a tool set, right, that enables your multiple customers, but all with a standard, uh, you know, kit that now the designers can freely design across multiple suppliers. Uh, that is also a prerequisite to getting the cost down, right? Because I see today also in the workshop, a lot of different applications with small volumes. Uh, this is not a good recipe for low cost. So um, Applied definitely uh, you know, has, a, has a key role to play in bringing the kind of standardization mindset and, and the enablement of the standardization that you have done very well in CMOS scaling. You have to bring that to silicon photonics as well as to packaging. It uh, reminded me of something uh, all else I think I should add to this conversation, right? Uh, which is something that I went through personally, so I have a personal story to connect with. My very first startup, uh, about 21 years ago now, we, we found her out of my work at Georgia Tech, um, went through the same kind of challenge that you just described. Um, so we had a new material, uh, a new design, and a new process integration scheme. All three were new. It was dramatically disruptive to the packaging uh, technologies that were being practiced back then. But uh, once we started to commercialize it and got into the commercial path, we faced very similar challenges to some of the startups uh, that were describing their challenges today. And one of the key challenges was that it was really difficult to get significant scale of investment in manufacturing infrastructure for something new, right? A new material and a new process flow uh, was very hard to convince the investors to put in, right? Um, because there was so much disruption 
and um, of course perceived risk comes with dis disruption as well right from a financial perspective uh, so what happened in my story was we had to actually go back to uh, just the design innovation and become a fabulous company and go back to actually say you know finding the most leading edge fab capability that was out there and using that to run our designs and what uh, ended up was that the technology that we had envisioned uh, and the differentiated power it had over what was being done in the beginning diminished. That differentiation diminished because we had to fall back on existing manufacturing capacity that was available. right? And I think that's a key part that companies like Applied need to help enable and continue to enable, right? not just through their venture arm, but through the ecosystem of ventures, uh, venture investments that you know we need to get together and you know focus on investing in new manufacturing capability right because without the new manufacturing capability being in step with the new design concepts the the real you know disruptive innovation is not going to come to light so i would say this is this is something i, I remembered from my history uh, and i actually saw that again today with many of the startups you have founded multiple companies yourself what is the advice that you would have for the startups that were present today? I, I, I always have one uh, fond piece of advice uh, because I've actually had two startups in my life and I had the same experience in both of them. Um, and uh, that is that uh, you really need, as a founder of a startup, you really need to maintain an open mind. Uh, it gets harder and harder. You get more and more uh, married to your own idea and uh, you initially have a vision of this is how it's going to apply in the market. And uh, as, a, as a founder, in both cases, what I found was um, over time, there were actually much better applications for the idea than what we had envisioned. So as a founder, you always have to be really cognizant of the fact that the vision you had for how to use your idea uh, is most of the time not the best. The idea is really good, but you know, uh, you will be surprised by, uh, you know, folks coming in from the user community and saying, I have a better use for your idea. And you have to be open to that and embrace it because that actually will accelerate your business uh, growth rather than, you know, being closed and saying, I want to stay on my path. Thank you again for being here. Um, to conclude, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, I did want to uh, really say thanks to uh, you know Dr. Ohm and Dr. Robert uh, for having me here at the workshop, and uh, it was really a fantastic uh, learning opportunity as well, uh, because I'm a lot more experienced in packaging, not necessarily uh, you know as knowledgeable about some of the other aspects of the silicon photonics. So it was a great opportunity to uh, to learn and also meet a lot of interesting people. So really want to say thanks to uh, the Applied team uh, to have for having me here.